My name is Randy Howell, and you're listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Welcome to the Faith and Fishing Podcast, where every episode I'll bring you an interview with a member of the fishing community, and they'll be sharing their faith stories and fishing memories with you. I'm your host, Cam Steele. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. I'm Cam. Hey, and I'm Robert. And this week, uh, it is going to be just Robert and myself. We've got a few things that that we're going to discuss. But first, I wanted to uh, wanted to just go over a couple of housekeeping things. Um, so first, I wanted to remind everybody about Jackson Orr's uh, fifth annual catch tournament. Uh, the Kayak Anglers Together Can Help. Uh, the charity tournament um even if you can't fish the tournament or even if you're not an angler um if you want to you know donate to to whatever charity ends up getting donated to because the the top six uh, i believe it is get to um get to donate to the charity of their choice um so uh, if you want to to donate to to whatever charity ends up uh getting donated to uh, we'll leave the link in the show notes to be able to sign up for that. It's twenty bucks, um, so it's it's not a not a ton of money, but it will make a difference. So uh, make sure you sign up for that. Um, and I wanted to to also say, uh, if you are someone who has been using a different podcast app to listen to us than what you normally listen to, because normally you you listen on Amazon Music or Audible. Uh, the Faith and Fishing podcast is now on Amazon Music and Audible. Uh, so now, if if uh, if advertising is is correct, I have not tested it yet. Uh, but all you got to say to your Echo is Alexa, play the Faith and Fishing podcast, and we should start playing. Uh, so that's going to be really awesome. So um, make sure you give that a shot, and if you've got one at the house and you. Uh, uh, you want to give that a shot, that would be awesome. Let us know if it works for you. We're going to test it too. Um, but yeah, and uh, Robert, did you want to uh, to kind of uh, – we still don't have an ad recorded for Omnia Fishing, so we want to make sure we give them their due. Uh, you want to, to – Yeah. Yeah, that. I mean, Omnia Fishing, we're, we're just glad to be partnered with those guys. Um, <clears throat> glad to be able to uh, post those fishing reports and then and then look up those fishing reports and we want to go to different lakes. Uh, I know today I got a notification that Cam, you uploaded one for your your recent uh, fishing trip. It looked like you wore them out pretty good, um, but you can do the same thing on your home lakes. Um, uh, you can go on to Omnia, uh, create an ambassador profile, and you can file your own fishing reports and. Uh, people can look those up and uh, use some of your recommended baits and you can start uh, earning some uh, cash back towards your next bait purchases uh, when they uh, follow your links and, and purchase the baits that you recommend. Uh, the whole system is pretty easy to operate. And then also one thing that's helped me if you are going somewhere to fish, uh, I fished a couple of out-of-state tournaments and uh, it's a great tool Um to go on and look at different lakes and different rivers and find out what those ambassadors around those areas are having uh, good success on. Uh, so you guys check that out. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a Omnia link uh, uh, at the bottom to scroll down, check that out, check out Cam's profile, uh, check out my profile. And, and I don't know if we've mentioned it or not, but there's a, there's a lot of pro anglers that have uh, their profiles on there uh, Seth Fighter, I know uh, a few kayak, Christine Fisher's on there. Uh, there's quite a few uh, professional level ambassadors. Uh, so, you know, those guys and gals are always um, on the fish. And uh, so you can get some good intel, good information from, from those ambassadors and all the rest of them on there. Absolutely. Kate Field is another one who uh, has some really awesome uh, reports up there. Yeah, Kate Field's um, on there. So, yeah, absolutely. And 
We've been giving Omni Efficient a lot of love on here. I know we play uh, ads for all of our sponsors, but we haven't we haven't actually talked about our sponsors in a while. So I wanted to give them um, a shout out uh, just because you know they uh, they've got they stood behind us and uh, want to you know just give them some love too. Uh, so uh, save your outdoors. Um, they sure have saved me a lot of money. And uh, Mr. Clumsy over here, I'm uh, I'm very thankful to Savior Outdoors uh, for all they've done for us. Um, Atolis, they kind of hit a hit a snag this year, uh, and they they had kind of bigger plans for for us than than we were able to do. But um, they still, um, you know, they are behind the podcast and we're behind them and um and hopefully hopefully they'll get a new manufacturer soon and be able to put out more of the uh the sunglass retainers but if you're a fly fisherman their fly caddy is is really awesome to be able to just clip it to your hat and carry your favorite flies with you um and that that program they've got where you get to kind of i get the the caddy and a few a few flies from from local uh local uh, fly tires that's a really awesome uh really awesome little program too uh jage jigs i uh, love joey over there in uh, missouri and um it is getting close to time that we're going to be fishing more finesse stuff and uh jage jigs is gonna come uh come into play a lot more than it has been here lately i'm a power fisherman through and through so those warmer months and the transition months where they're chasing, you know, moving baits, it's hard to put those down. But uh, here, whenever the water turns cold, I'm going to be picking the Jay's jigs back up. Um, Mr. B Lure Company, um, he's got all those awesome, awesome jigs, uh, spinner baits, bladed jigs. His his bladed jigs, man, I have uh, I have really fallen in love with them. Um, and people are going to tell me I'm crazy, but I. I put the, uh, the the jackhammer down. Um, I've I've just had better luck with the the Mr. B's this year, um, and they've just got a they've got a different action, different sound, and um, I've I've really liked those. And then uh, get outdoors pedal and paddle in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, love those guys over there. Will he's the owner out there. He uh, he does a lot for the podcast and. They have a great selection of kayaks and everything you need to, to go kayaking or kayak fishing or biking um, or, you know, just doing outdoor stuff, um, you know, carrying whatever you have on your vehicle, whether it be skis or snowboards or kayaks or whatever. So um, wanted to wanted to make sure we gave we gave them some love um, this episode uh, just because, like I said, we play the we play the ads every um, every episode, but I just wanted to say something, you know, with with my voice that, that hasn't been recorded and you haven't heard thousands of times already. So yeah, yeah, and, and all those uh, all those guys, all of our sponsors that uh, you know are all local businesses, and I know for a fact that uh, Get Outdoors is is big. They are big supporters of uh, some of our local trails that we fish. And, you know, that's the people that 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 we should be supporting as a fishing community uh, are those businesses that are helping out and, and giving back, um, you know, and doing some sponsorships for your local trails. So, you know, it's very important to, to not. You know, I mean, I love Bass Pro Shop. I mean, they have, you know, so much stuff in there. And it it is fun to go shop and just, you know, just for the experience to go in and and have everything right there. But, uh, you know, don't forget those uh, small tackle shops and uh, the people that support these tournaments. Um, You know, obviously, Bass Pro Shops is a – they support the – you know, the BPT and, and, and some other things, but, you know, local level, what a lot of our listeners are fishing, um, you know, support those guys. And when you hear those names called out of these different tournaments, uh, remember them. And then when you need something that they can help you out with, 
uh, go support them because that's these these bigger trails. Uh, that's what makes these the bigger local trails. That's what makes them tick. Are the people that are doing the trails are actually supporting the people who are supporting the trails. If somebody's putting their money up, so you know they can sponsor the big bass or whatever type of sponsorship it is. If they're putting up 200, 300 a tournament for big bass and, you know, you're doing 10 tournaments a year just so we can have even numbers. If they're putting up 2000 bucks for the year to sponsor big bass, guess what? If they don't get a return uh, of $2,000, you know, or more, obviously they're looking for more because they want to grow their business. They want to make money. You know, the math just doesn't work out. So I, I have, seen and heard instances um you know where those some people don't come back because uh they don't get the return on investment that they're looking for so uh that, that's a great thing for anybody that's a tournament director as well uh you know push those guys and uh push push the people that are in the trails and not so much push them to twist their arm but just remind them hey check these guys out you know shoot a little blurb out every once in a while. So, uh, you know, it's at everybody's top of mind to support those guys that support these, this local guys fishing. Absolutely. Well said, man. All right. Well, we are going to, um, we're going to play a couple of those ads we were just talking about. And then, uh, we are going to, uh, just kind of dive into a little, a uh, little bit of a conversation with myself and, and Robert. So, We'll be right back right after this. Atolas, based out of Charleston, South Carolina, is an eyewear accessory and gear company focused on enhancing your time on the water. Their floating sunglass retainers are the most technically advanced around. Over five years of engineering, testing, and exhaustive feedback from paddlers, anglers, and watermen have resulted in a patented design in a class of its own. They're incredibly light and comfortable, built for durability, sport a sleek, minimal design, float virtually all brands and models of sunglasses, and they're back for life. So if you break them, Atolas will replace them, no questions asked. Whether you're fishing, kayaking, or boating, Atolas will save your shades from the dream. Head on over to atollas.co to check out their gear and use promo code FAITHINFISH15, that's FAITH, the letter N, FISH, the number 1, 5, at checkout to save 15% on your order. Get Outdoors Pedal and Paddle in Greensboro, North Carolina offers a wide range of products and services designed to help protect the environment and enhance the time people spend enjoying the outdoors. With an expansive year-round inventory of kayaks, sups, bikes, kayak fishing accessories, paddling clothing, biking accessories, and more, Get Outdoors has established itself as one of the top paddle sports and biking shops in the southeast. They also offer a wide range of kayak safety and technique courses to get you comfortable in your new boat. They'll even get it rigged up for you. Stop by the shop in Greensboro, North Carolina, or check them out at shopgetoutdoors.com. All right, so Robert, you mentioned earlier um, I got a chance to to get out and fish uh, this weekend. Did, have you been able to to fish since we since we talked last? And I haven't. I started some new ventures as far as work wise, and I've kind of been. Um, I do. I have a lawn care landscaping business, so that's been my main my main deal for the last ten. Uh, the 12 years, I, I guess I started that in 2010. And before that, I was in the restaurant business for a long time. Uh, and really my whole adult life, that that's the only, I mean, I had other little side jobs when I was a teenager. And, uh, but uh, as an adult, that's really the only two jobs I've worked is from the restaurant business for O'Charlie's for 17 years. And then my own business, uh, starting in 2010 and, and still going, um, but I actually started working for uh, a company called Noble Oil that's out of Sanford. And so uh, I've been super busy with that. And, and we are also uh, have a rental property that we're in the process of, of selling one and, and buying another rental property. And that's taken up a ton of extra time. And then like this weekend, 
Um, my wife is running a race. She's running a half marathon in, um, uh, it's close to Oak Island. It's one of the beach towns out there. There's, there's a trail out there and it's kind of like, she's as hooked on running marathons and stuff as we are on fishing. And she does, uh, half marathons. It's called, um, I want to say it's called the big ass metal, the BAM trail, big ass metal. And then they get these metals that are like big ass metals. I mean, and so it's pretty cool. And uh, so they go up and down uh, the coast of North Carolina and run at a lot of different uh, beach venues and those cities, uh, you know, pay to bring those runners there. The same as when we go do a bass tournament, they're paying to bring those bass tournaments into these different towns. And those towns out there are paying to bring those uh, marathon runners. So she's doing that this weekend and both kids have ball tournaments. So we're playing in Walnut Creek and then uh, my son gets to play at actually the Durham athletic park stadium. And oh, cool. then yeah, he gets to play there on Saturday and then at Ting park in Holly Springs, which is a, another, I think it's a single A or, or but it's, they're both, I mean, Durham athletic parks is a triple A stadium. I mean, it's as nice as you, you know, that's a nice deal. So uh, he's gotten to play at a few, he played at UNC stadium, a couple of weeks ago, NC State's field. He's played at a few times this this year. So uh, we got that going on this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And, you know, I think we got a couple more weekends of baseball and softball. And then about the time it gets super cold, uh, it'll be time maybe to do some cast and blast. Maybe we'll put the fishing pole on there and, and hunt some ducks at the same time. So that's about the next thing I get to look forward to is maybe some Cape Fear River um action and maybe carry the shotgun and do a little fishing uh you know, of course here if you're if you're duck hunting you're only hunting for about the first 15 minutes of daylight and then after the wood ducks fly you're not you're not seeing a whole lot else so it kind of works out good to have another backup plan and uh, cast a cast a crankbait or you know figure out something on where some of these fish are but um, I hear you. Yeah. So, uh, tell me about your day. At uh, I saw some pictures you posted. It looked like you had a pretty good day. I did. Yeah. So I went out to uh, Lake Raleigh. It's the little lake that's closest to my house. That's. I, I wasn't gonna blow your spot up. I wasn't gonna call out the lake or anything. But. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's all good, man. Uh, but it's it's like sixty eight acres is what it's listed as. But I mean. There's no way it's 68 acres worth of water. Um, but I w- went out and I, I did end up having a good day. Um, I, one of my goals was to, uh, was to have, was to gain some confidence in some, some techniques that I, I didn't have confidence in. One of those was the jerk bait. And the first bite I got on a jerk bait, near about took the rod out of my hand and I was like, yeah. this is why people throw a jerk bait and I'm hooked now. <laughs> and I did end up uh, catching a couple on the jerk bait and lost my jerk bait. Uh, I, uh, I must've burned my, my leader leader line whenever I tied the knot cause the, the fluorocarbon was still inside the, uh, the braid and the leader knot, uh, but, uh, but it had, uh, Gotcha. Broke right at the right at the seam there, so I, I must have, have burned it uh, whenever I tied that knot. But um, it was just one of those days, man, where they were biting everything I threw, and um, at least until you know about one thirty or so. And yeah, that's that's good. Um, I ended up catching, you know, I I caught four over three pounds. I nice caught a couple little dinks, and then <laughs> had the, the bravest little. Crappy decided he was going to eat a a Hellraiser, and I don't know if you've thrown one of those yet, man. That is a weird bait. That yeah, thing so, throws some water. So I was talking to um, one of the guys that I just started working with, and and uh, he fishes one of the local rivers quite a bit, and uh, he said he's been keeping two of those tied on quite frequently, and and it always has them on the deck of his boat, and. Uh, I could tell by the grin on his face that 
he wanted to say more, but, but he didn't. So I just, I just nodded and, and didn't ask any more questions because we all know what that look means. So right. um, I think that may be, you know, I haven't, gone that route I, I do have a couple of the slobber knockers over there that um, I want to see how that different vibration is and then you've you've almost uh, talked me into uh, maybe a chartreuse Mr. B's uh, vibrating jig so tell me a little bit about that because we'll kind of go final cast on on that Mr. B's lure because it looked a little bit juicy hanging out of that bass's mouth and then I, I saw somebody had commented under that picture but tell me a little bit about that bait and why you you know are liking that better than the jackhammer and and was that the the main color you were using or do you have a few different colors of those give us a rundown on it all right yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna pull it up real quick um so that we can we can talk about it but yeah, so it's the Mr. B uh, Lure Company bladed jig. Up here. And it is. Um, so, you know how with the, the thing with all of the different. Uh, um, all the different uh, uh, jackhammers is. Uh, most places they use a split ring because they can't attach it directly to the head. Right. Well, Mr. B does is this. So, so it's got a post and okay. then the, the, the jig comes out and you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the, the head the same way that a, that a jackhammer does. It kind of it kind of slithers, right? So it's got a different sound. It's got a different vibration. I mean, it's it doesn't it doesn't vibrate right away like a jackhammer does, because mm -hmm. um, I, I I doubt that anything other than a jackhammer ever will. Um, but I I don't know for a fact that the blade actually does hit the head or not, but I do know that. Um, just like a jackhammer, whenever I've fished it for a, a day or two, that head gets beat up real bad. And I don't know if it's just I'm banging it up against everything. Yeah, right. It's that. Yeah. Um, but he, I mean, he's got some phenomenal colors. Um, I'll show you uh, my my favorites here. It's the, um, you know, just typical white chartreuse. Uh -huh. And he's got... Um, like the holographic blades. Um, so for the white and chartreuse, he's got the gold blade. Um, let's see. The yeah, that's what I thought was interesting was the the chartreuse blade. And is, so tell me a little bit about that material that the blade's made out of. Is it, how does that, obviously all the ones that I've seen are either just a painted piece um, or it is, you know, just the metal, but that actually looks like it has some, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but you can see the prisms in there and see the different yeah. colors that's reflecting off of that. Is that a, what kind of, yeah. what is that? So it's a, it's a metal blade with some sort of, um, it's some sort of adhesive, um, adhesive holographic yeah. okay um i don't want to say film but kind of yeah. a film or, or that's why i was kind of wondering how that was connected to the metal or if it was uh yeah i didn't know exactly what that was but i saw your picture you posted when you uh, had caught that fish and that kind of caught my eye and um i was uh but yeah the uh the other color um i used the white chartreuse the battle shad and the midnight here. Um, so that midnight has like a, I don't know if he's got a picture of it anywhere. It might be this one here. So the, the kind of the black and blue holographic blade right. on there. Um, then the battle shad is if I'm, if I'm fishing somewhere that's a little clearer, 
um, that battle shad color is, is awesome. And, um, I really, my favorite thing about the battle shad color is if you order anything that you order from the battle shad, um, I think it's 30% of the proceeds go to the wounded warrior project. Um, yes. So yeah. even if I never, never really have a, a real use for the battle shad because all the lakes I fish are super dirty. I always like to order a couple. So. Yeah. Those, those white ones, uh, they work in dirty water too, though. Uh, I like, I like that battle shad color. <clears throat> um, if you're, if you're someone who loves the fire crawl color, his habanero. <clears throat> yeah, it looks beautiful. nice too. And it's got like a, it. it's got an orange holographic blade. Um, it is, let's see, I don't know if he's got a picture of it or not. Um, it's not, it's not the same as the Oki special. That's just a painted orange blade. Gotcha. Um, but it's the holographic looking one. Right. <clears throat> yeah. I was just, you know, I, I guess, you know, that extended post, it probably doesn't make, I would assume it doesn't make as much sound, but when you're getting that vibration and you have some, a different sound, I mean, I, I like, you know, I, I do like the jackhammers, but I tend to lean a little bit more toward the thunder crickets. I, I like that. I have both and I throw both. And then, uh, like I said, I have the slobber knocker, but I, I haven't even tied it on yet and haven't had a chance to test that out. But then you have all the Z-Man kind of subsets of uh, the bladed jigs with uh, you have the bigger bladed one. You have... Um, the I think they're called the minis or the mighties that are the next size down. Uh, a lot of people have been having good luck with them, but I think when you get into those, you know the the bigger groups of what people are throwing are the jackhammers, and you have a, a smaller set that are the regular original chatter baits uh, from Z Man, and then you have this whole group of individual bait makers that are using that split ring which to me if you put a blade on the front of a jig which is basically a bladed jig but if you connect it with that split ring pretty much all of those are going to be a similar cadence and right. a similar sound and i know that there's some maybe some differences in some blade sizes and blade material um, but you really that uh, jade's jigs you really are looking at something that I haven't seen a lot of people or really I haven't seen anybody have an extended post like that. So um, yeah. that may be something to put in the arsenal for sure. And it, it, uh, it hunts really, really well. Um, I, I like a, uh, I like a, a trailer on it. That's got a, like a long straight tail. Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe a little fork at the end of the tail or a fluke style trailer, um, a little bit skinnier than a flute. Um, okay. but, uh, and with those, with those longer, longer tails and, and you like kind of do the start stop and, and, um, and jerk it and, and move it around. It, it hunts really, really well. And it's, I mean, it has a, it has a thump it's got a, it's got a good vibration to it. It's, it is definitely a different sound. And, um, I don't know if they just have gotten in our neck of the woods, they've just gotten Jack hammered out or what, but this year the Mr. B's just have, have outperformed. Um, cause I, I usually, I usually go back and forth, um, and just to, to see what they're, what they're wanting that day. Cause sometimes it, it will be, something that it has more of a tinging sound to it, but right. Um, yeah, I'm going to yeah. have to definitely, um, get on their website and, uh, and get a couple of those and, in, in my favorite couple of colors, I'm not a really big color. I think you got black and blue and then white and chartreuse and, you know, you got to have, have a green pumpkin in there, especially on some soft plastics that even that I like the green pumpkin, uh, bladed jigs too, but that's really my my three go tos. You may throw a fire crawl in there in the springtime, but right. Yeah, I think he's, you got, can, yeah. he's got a bunch of different um uh, uh, bluegill patterns too uh that are that are really good. So um the female bluegill is uh 
is probably my favorite for um, for a swim jig. I, right. I do that with my swim jigs a lot. I, I haven't really done a lot in terms of chatter baits in a bluegill pattern. I probably should. But. Did you, uh, you said you were using the jerk baits and then the, uh, Mr. Uh, the bladed jigs. And, uh, so what else is that your main go-tos for, um, for the other day when you posted your pictures? It was, um, I did catch, I, I caught one on a, uh, on a lipless and that's something I'm typically not very good at. So it was good to, to, to get that, um, get that under my belt. And I, I'm, I usually catch one or two a year on a lipless and here lately I've, I've caught a few, you know, this is my first time really this year has been my first time really fishing a grass lake and, and learning how to fish grass. And I'm starting to feel like I've got the hang of it at least this year. Now, next year, they'll, they'll all be different. <laughs> yeah. So I'm on a, on a lipless too. And I don't remember if I've told this story on here or not, but, um, this is probably <laughs> some backwoods stuff here, but, um, we used to, I grew up fishing Barkley Lake, Kentucky Lake. And, uh, when the lipless crankbaits first came out, I was a kid, but my, we, I'd go with my dad. And I remember vividly when those baits came out. I mean, it was like the jackhammer is now. I mean, it was, if you didn't, I mean, if you were throwing it, you were putting them in the boat left and right. And, uh, as the, um, colder temperatures got here and they get on those ledges on Kentucky Lake, we would put split shots about a foot up above uh, the lipless crankbaits to get them to get deep enough to get to where the fish were. And so that's something else in the wintertime that I do uh, at Harris or something else is I'll put some weights on those and run them down there and it almost works um, you know, you can even jig it like you would jig a spoon and it gives them a little bit different look. Uh, but that's an easier way to get those things to get a little bit deeper because they don't get as deep as you need to in the winter time. But that's something you can actually do pretty good on, um, is weighting some of those down, which a, a lot of people, I don't think they probably frown on you putting some split shots up above that. But hey, if it works, it works. That's right. Absolutely, man. Well, um, anybody who knows me knows that I'm typically late to the party on a lot of stuff. And, uh, we touched on it a little bit, uh, at the end of the episode, uh, last week, but, um, uh, but we wanted to, to kind of give our thoughts on, on the, the whole, you know, the walleye, uh, cheating thing that went on. Um, you don't want was, to, was there, was there a while there was a cheating scandal? I missed that. Oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I mean, what a negative light to put all fishermen into, but I didn't mean to interrupt. I just was going to throw that in there. I mean, I had so many people messaging me that don't even fish. It was just, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. Same. All of a sudden I was the, you know, the popular guy at work or, I was, all family members text me, Hey, did you hear about this? And, and everything. And it's like, you know, these are people that I have been trying to talk up fishing to for years. And this yeah. is the, this is the, the first other than me, this is the first thing that, that they get, they get shown. So it's, you know, fishermen have been known as, as liars for as long as I can remember. So we, we really needed the, the negative press. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like to call it more embellishers, but, <laughs> you know, we too tend to embellish every once in a while. But, I mean, they took it to a whole nother level, which, you know, you never know, you know, what people are doing. And, um, I, you know, we saw some uh, high school guys not long before those guys. Um, I saw a post of... Uh, some high school guys getting caught cheating with uh, baskets and, and tying fish out. And then 
I think it was the week after the walleye guys, I think here locally, they had somebody had posted a, um, a large, I won't even say what it is. So I don't give anybody else the ideas, but a large, um, container, uh, made to hold fish, um, that was sunk in one of our local lakes around here. And, uh, you know, I just, <clears throat> we talked about it on the side some, you know, not on the podcast, <clears throat> but, you know, it just makes me think about, you know, the, I mean, what is it even, what, why are you even fishing a tournament? Because I, I fish tournaments because I want to have the feeling of, okay, I'm getting better. Okay. I, I'm competitive. I like to win and I like to beat people and I like that feeling, but I can tell you because I'm not perfect and I've made mistakes in my life and, and everybody has, but when you are not being honest at something, you don't get that feeling. I don't care. It's like those guys could not feel good about any of those wins. And it just like, what, what are you even doing? And it's, it all goes back to, and I, I pulled some uh, things up to, to read and it all goes back to, to pride and ego. And it is a battle that, most people face on a daily basis. I do. I mean, it is one of the toughest things sometimes to swallow your pride and control your ego. Um, but just, just like some of these verses say, I mean, God hates pride and I'll just read through a couple of them, but Proverbs eight thirteen: to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and uh, perverse speech. Proverbs eleven two. when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. And I mean, that is a, a perfect example. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. I cannot imagine the feeling that those two guys have and how they must feel. And I don't care how many, how much money you win or how much you, you feel like, you know, you've done something because your, your name is up there for winning these tournaments. And I won't even say that they won the tournaments that their name was up there for winning, but they, they knew they didn't win. Um, but Proverbs sixteen five, the Lord detest all, the Lord detest all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. And, you know, you're seeing some of that now with, you know, you reap what you sow on deals like that. And, you know, you may get away with it to the outside world for however long it takes for for you to get caught. But you never get away with it even one time, you know, to yourself and to what you have to get up and face in the mirror each day. And, uh, you know, when, when I've done things that, <clears throat> that I, I made a, sh should have made a different choice and I'm not talking about fishing tournaments or whatever, but it's just in a daily life. And I do something that maybe I'm not proud of. Maybe I don't control my anger sometimes when I'm disciplining my kids and I'm too, too harsh with my words sometimes. And, you know, that doesn't make me feel good. And it, cheating and, and doing things like that, it just honestly blows my mind how you can get up every day and just continue down that path to the point of where you're putting eight pounds of lead down a fish's gullet along with fillets of fish and I'm sure that they're probably in a way glad that it's all done and so they can move on and, you know, get involved with another hobby because I'm sure it won't be fishing. No, uh, it won't. Uh, um, and I mean, they've pretty much been banned for life from 
any any uh, wildlife um, yeah. wildlife hobby at all. But uh, it was a it was such a perfect example of how easily and how uh, how strongly greed can take over. Because you know who knows how long they've been doing this, right? Um, but the um, the thing that gets me was, you know, had they have done, you know, five pounds of lead, they probably wouldn't have got caught. Um, or had they have done, you know, four pounds of lead, they probably wouldn't have got caught. Probably, I think they still would have won. Um, I but, think, and I, I could be wrong, and I, I really, after I watched a couple of them, I just stopped because I didn't want to keep watching because – it was so big that you had so many people regurgitating the same thing, um, you know, and I had things coming to my feet and people sending me things. But I may be wrong on this, but on um, the interview that they did with the tournament director, to me, from what he was saying on that, they would have won without any of the weights um, for that particular tournament. And you know, it just, it blows my mind, you know, uh, luckily he was, he was aware, aware enough to, to find that out and to see that, oh, I know what, uh, uh, now I couldn't have told you how big the walleye are supposed to be because I don't fish for walleye, but obviously you got a guy that's a tournament director for a walleye trail and he sees all these fish coming across. And if you got those fish and they're eight pounds heavy, I mean, how could you think you're not going to get caught as, you know, I mean, if they're that ballsy, how many times have they done that? Good Lord. Absolutely. But, and, you know, I feel, you know, the guys who ended up actually winning, um, like, have they gotten any press? Like, I mean, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine, you know, like being the guys who, who came in, who came in second at, at initially and then ended up winning the tournament. And now like your win is now tainted because these guys yeah. cheated because now it's like, it's, it's not what it could be, you know, like you'll always be the guy who, who won because they cheated kind of thing. Yeah. I, you know, I don't even, I don't even, I don't know their names because it hasn't been put out there as much as the negative has been, but that's kind of the way our society um, leans toward now. I mean, the things that get promoted or, you know, the more negative things. And I, I think Brian Latimer put out a video you know, kind of the same thing, or it may, it may have even been on his Facebook page. I, I don't remember what it was on. I just remember it, it was uh, him in some way, shape, or form and saying the same thing. You know, the the uh, the people that won and, you know, or even, you know, take, take a something else, maybe a charity tournament or something that should be getting some uh, bigger press. But, you know, then we, we turn it into – the thing that gets the most press is, is the negative thing because, you know, it's like a traffic accident. You know, you, you got to slow down and, and see how bad the car is messed up, you know, and then the, you cause another wreck on the other side of the road because now this side of the interstate slowed down because they're looking at the wreck over there. And, uh, you know, I don't know that we'll ever, with the amount of information and the, the online stuff and um, just the way all those algorithms work and, and just human nature. Um, I, I don't know that we'll ever go a different direction as a whole, as a society, as a whole, um, you know, and just like I was talking about before, that's one thing you personally have to make a conscious effort to not keep clicking on the same walleye scandal video because it's somebody else's take on it you know the main thing is is you know the greed and the pride and the egos and you know stuff that we all 
uh, face and, and try to put our best foot forward every day, you know, in, in much smaller, different ways than, than what those guys were doing. But it, it's a daily battle that everybody faces, uh, no matter who you are. So, um, you know, I just try to go one day at a time, say, I'm going to make this the best day that I can and, and try to make the right decisions. And, and that still doesn't always work out. Um, but then you regroup and see what you can do better the, the next day and, um, uh, you know, try to, you know, be a positive influence on everybody that you come in contact with, with that day and, and try to recognize those people that may need a, a listening ear. Uh, or may need somebody to, to talk to um, and maybe ask that one more question when somebody doesn't seem like they're in a great mood. And, you know, we just need more people doing that type of stuff than gawking at the next, you know, clickbait thing that's going on in the world. Absolutely. So, um, like Robert said last episode, you know, um, let's, uh, let's do what we can to make, uh, Jackson's, uh, catch tournament go just as viral as, as that did. I mean, it, it's going to take a lot more effort on our part because, um, it's a lot easier to pull someone down than it is to pull, pull somebody up. It's a lot easier to, uh, like you said, you know, negative news and negativity spreads so much faster than, than positive. Uh, because, you know, the, uh, whenever you get positive news, it doesn't make you feel better about yourself. Um, whenever you get negative news that, you know, well, I don't cheat at fishing tournaments. So I am a better person and I feel good about myself because I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it might it might slightly make my twentieth place uh, feel a little bit better. No, I'm just kidding. It, it doesn't. I, I don't want to see you know fishing or, or tournaments portrayed in that. But you know, it is uh, just a bad thing. I, I just hate that look for our, our sport and and all of the great people that are in this sport. And uh, I just I hate to see it when things take a negative turn. Um, Gerald Swindle had a video about, you know, he, he's, he's on social media, like nobody's business. And he is posting all kinds of videos of, you know, positive mental attitude. He's posting hunting videos and, and uh, fishing videos. And, and he posted one, I think this week. And I didn't even see the original video. I just heard him talking about, cause he had to take it down. Cause he was trying to make a point about crossbows and how in his area he wished that people wouldn't use crossbows because that's what a lot of people poaching deer are now using because it is a more stealthy way to poach deer. So people are popping out of the top of sunroofs with spotlights and poaching deer with crossbows. And then he gets all this blowback from people about handicapped people using crossbows and crossbows are illegal and you can use them. And that's not what the dude meant, you know, and, and people want to get on there and get behind the keyboard and blow somebody up when you know, good and well, what he's talking about. He was not talking about somebody that's handicapped using a crossbow. He was not talking about a hunter, if you want to use that as your weapon of choice and you're in a tree stand and you're doing things the right way, have at it. All he's talking about is don't hang out your sunroof and spotlight and poach deer. And it's becoming a problem because obviously you hear a gunshot at nighttime. Hey, oh, hey, somebody's doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Guess what? You can't hear that crossbow. And so that is a problem that, you know, you're going to have to get creative and figure something, figure something out on it. Uh, because I never thought about, um, you know, I never thought about that, I, but I never thought about putting eight pounds of lead in fish either. So, right. but I just hate it when people go up and, and they blow things up that, you know, 
these positive people that are putting out these videos and, and they're actually trying to portray our sport and hunting and the outdoors in a positive manner. And then somebody has to go around and twist the good things that they say. Uh, so it just, you know, it's just human nature to, to always try to go or, I don't even want to say human nature. It's some people's human nature to go and twist those things around into negative things. You're always going to have those negative people. Um, and I think the internet and social media has really shown a spotlight on those people because it is easier for them to broadcast that negativity out. Absolutely. Really what we're saying here is, you know, let's, Let's do what we can to to spread the positivity, the positive things that are going on in the sport, and and let's uh, let's you know let's shrug off the the negativity, and you know, I, I I joke all the time that you know my my mom and dad always said if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all, and then they wondered why I was so quiet as a kid, uh, <laughs> but. You know that if you if you don't have anything nice to say, then you know just move on. That's right. And go find something that you can say something nice about, yeah. and say that. So that's uh, that's really. I, I think that's really what we're trying to say here. Yeah, be be positive, and you know exactly like you said. Uh, that's a great point. If you don't have something nice to say, man, just just scroll on past that. Scroll on past that thing. It, you ain't got to stop and comment on everything. I see stuff I don't like every day, whether it's in person or online. If I don't think I can help that person or if I don't have a, a positive outlook on that, man, I ain't wasting my time on it. I got I got other things to concentrate and focus my time on rather than commenting on somebody's post about, yeah, you never know that maybe that's the only reason they posted it is to try to get a reaction and a comment out of somebody. And, you yeah. know, I for sure know that's why people are posting some of these videos and stuff is just to get a reaction out of people. So best thing you do on that, like you said, in real life and just keep scrolling or, or, or keep walking on by on those people that you don't, you know, you, you don't think you can, <laughs> you can help. And then, give your attention to those that you you think really do need some help and some positivity in their life that are receiving of it. Absolutely. Well, um, let's go ahead. Let's play a couple, a uh, couple ads and then, uh, and then let's, let's close it on out, brother. Sounds good. Whether you're a Ned rig vet or a finesse fishing noob like me, Jade's jigs is your source for high quality finesse jigs that raise the bar by being lead free. Using a tin bismuth alloy not only makes Jade's jigs eco-friendly, it also makes the jig lighter so you get the same profile with less weight for the fish to feel. Check out jadesjigs.com, that's J-A-D-E-S-J-I-G-S.com to see their full lineup of jigs, styles, and colors. And since you're a Faith and Fishing listener, you can save 10% on your order by using promo code FNF10 at checkout. Save your outdoors gives me confidence that no matter what happens, what I take on the water is coming back home with me. With retrieval devices for fishing rods, bow fishing bows, action cams, and even one that can be attached to your other gear, they've got your whole arsenal covered. When one of these devices goes in a drink, it releases a float attached to your gear by 60 feet of line so you can get it back, and the pressure sensitive filter means that you don't have to worry about rain or dips in the water while landing a fish. At SaveYourOutdoors.com, that's S-A-V-U-R Outdoors.com, you can use promo code FNFP15 to save 15% and try them for yourself. With 30 years of experience of handcrafting lures under his belt, Mr. B of Mr. B Lure Company is making high quality spinner baits, buzz baits, jigs, underspins, swim blades, and more right here in the U.S. All of his skirts are hand tied and all of his baits feature a baked on powder paint, all metal components and only owner and gamagatsu hooks. All of his baits come in a variety of colors and if you purchase a bait in the battle shad color, 30% of the proceeds go to the Wounded Warrior Project. To see the quality for yourself, go to mrblurecompany.com, that's mrblurecompany.com 
to place your order and use promo code faith the letter n fish the letter n p o d 1x10 at checkout to save 10% on your first order. Well, Robert, I feel like that ended up being uh, being an awesome episode. Um, I did not, uh, I didn't really have a, a plan with this episode, and I, uh, I thought you you carried the team well, brother. <laughs> Sometimes the best plan is no plan at all. Just roll with it and and see where it goes. And uh, you know, I, I was glad that we got to talk a little fishing and uh, a little about those bladed jigs and. Uh, you know, and then sh- shine a little, shine a little light on some positivity with the uh, Jackson's Cash Tournament. Um, I haven't even signed up for that yet, but I'm I'm probably going to do that as soon as we get off here, and uh, you know, maybe uh, share that out on on Facebook and uh, you know challenge some other guys and and gals. And that's one thing you can do to get that out is. Uh, you know, a lot of times we'll scroll through Instagram and we're looking at fishing pics or, or whatever. But, um, you know, post that on your Instagram. Uh, I'm going to sign up for it and, and make an Instagram post on it and maybe even challenge some of these guys um, that are are great on Instagram and, uh, you know, challenge them to be like, hey, let's see what you got. You know, let's let's see if the area you're fishing can stack up to central North Carolina. And, uh, you know, you start challenging some people like that for a good cause and have fun with it. And, um, you know, his, his goal is to, I think he said, get 200. Uh, so, I mean, really with social media and, and being a nationwide deal, we ought to really blow 200 out of the, out of the water. So uh, yeah. that's one thing I'll challenge our listeners to do is to, is to share that tournament, sign up for it and, uh, if you do, uh, you know, message me, uh, message Cam or, or tag the Faith and Fishing podcast in there, tag Jackson in it and uh, kind of get some uh, get some hype built up um, and see if we can't get get a, a ton of participants for it. Absolutely. I want to uh, I want to see your name up there. And if I uh, if I get to. To, to fish a day or two on that weekend. I hope to see your name underneath mine. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fine. That'll be fine. I mean, I, I'm okay with being two. If you want to win and I'm number two, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, y'all remember to to sign up for that tournament. Uh, and go out, spread some positivity. Um, that's going to do it for this episode. I do believe y'all take care and God bless. Sounds good. See you later. Thank you for listening to the Faith and Fishing Podcast. Faith and Fishing is produced and hosted by me, Cam Steele, and is sponsored by Jade's Jigs, Get Outdoors Pedal and Paddle, Save Your Outdoors, Atolas, and Mr. B Lure Company. Be sure to give us a rating and a review and to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. That's going to do it for this episode. Y'all take care and God bless.